Hello there. I'm Dr. Mitchell, um, the senior surgeon and the medical director at the Norman Parathyroid Center uh, and the uh, director of the Parathyroid Division at the Hospital for Endocrine Surgery in Tampa, Florida. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'd like to go over uh, some interesting reoperative parathyroid surgery cases that I have uh, uh, taken care of uh, recently. Um, obviously, I've dedicated my career to taking care of uh, patients with surgical parathyroid disease, um, but I've become very interested in uh, reoperative parathyroid cases specifically. Um, they're pretty challenging, both uh, cerebrally and technically, and there are a lot of patients out there, I think, who've had uh, unsuccessful operations, and they, they are sort of left not knowing what to do. And so I I'd hope that by uh, sharing some of these cases that we've done here, uh, that it might um, show these people uh, out there around the country that there are options for them uh, for success and, and, and cure of their disease. So the first case I'm going to talk about today is a pretty complicated one. This is a 67-year-old woman who lives in Tennessee, and she has a complicated parathyroid history. Um, she had three really extensive unsuccessful operations where uh, no parathyroid glands at all were identified. Uh, this was in Tennessee, all three of these operations by the same surgeon. First was in 2011. Um, it was two-year cycles, I guess, because the second was in 2013, the third in 2015. Really long operations that were just not successful. And she was sort of left not knowing what to do. Uh, she found our center back then, and, and in 2016, she came here, and Dr. Norman actually operated on her and removed a right upper parathyroid tumor. She did great, she was cured, her symptoms resolved, she was very happy. Now this is uh, maybe one of the, the most unlucky women in the world because after all of that, she recurred. It's really rare to develop a second parathyroid tumor over the course of your life, but she did. And she started to feel poorly again six years later in 2022. She was suspicious that she might have another problem and labs confirmed that she indeed had recurrent hyperparathyroidism. Now, most surgeons, after all the surgery that she had, uh, would, probably would not touch this patient. But she had been here, and she contacted us, uh, contacted us right away um, for evaluation. So she came to our center. I met this uh, really nice lady, and we performed our imaging tests. And uh, the standard test that we do, one called a SESTIM AB scan, it's a nuclear medicine x-ray that we do on all of our patients before surgery. And the findings were uh, a little inconclusive. She had a signal um, uh, or an area of, of increased accumulation of that tracer that we use near the upper pole of her right thyroid lobe. But it wasn't really clear if this was thyroid tissue or not. So th this is uh, um, a picture of a SESTIM AB scan of this patient and uh, you can get a sense of the shape of this patient's body. This is her left side, this is the right side of the patient. These signals or areas of uptake are just the, the liver and the heart, and this is uh, in the neck, this is the thyroid gland that you're seeing, left lobe, and here's the right lobe. Now there's increased uptake of the tracer over here of unclear significance, and then there's this little area here with a bit more uptake of the tracer as well. And again, it's, it's sort of unclear what to make of these findings. Uh, so after reviewing this, I performed an ultrasound on this patient. And here's a, a, an image from that ultrasound exam. And just to give you a sense of what you're looking at, I know it's hard for you to, to tell what you're looking at here, but if you can picture the patient, the orientation here is the patient's head is in the screen, her feet are, are she's pointing towards us. She's laying like this, and these are cross-sectional cuts through her neck. We're looking up into her neck from below. And so the things you're seeing here are the following. This is the, the larynx, okay? This bright area is just cartilage that you're seeing. It tends to be bright on ultrasound. This here is the carotid artery. And this space is where sort of the action is. This is where parathyroids tend to live. Now this dark area here, we would call hypoechoic. This is a discrete structure. This is well above her thyroid actually. Uh, so a bit of an unusual place for a parathyroid, and it's not entirely typical. Uh, while they tend to be dark like this, these bright streaks you see in this little bright dot, that's not typical for parathyroid tumors. So uh, again, uh, a finding, but a bit inconclusive. Inconclusive imaging findings, and for such a complicated reoperative case like hers, we really want to be as certain as we can be of uh, where her problem is, because this type of reoperative surgery is very difficult technically. So one of the benefits of, of, of our center here is 
with those inconclusive findings, I called over to our ultrasound department and said I needed a biopsy. Okay, and within 10 minutes, she'd undergone a, a fine needle aspiration biopsy, ultrasound guided of that finding on ultrasound that I showed you. Um, I reviewed the cytology with the pathologist. Our pathologists here do nothing but look at our tissue. Um, again, one of the benefits of having a hospital uh, for, for nothing but endocrine surgery here. So within 10 minutes, I had reviewed those cytology findings, which were suspicious for parathyroid, although not definitive. Uh, the other thing we did was we sent an, a portion of that aspirate of that biopsy for parathyroid hormone levels, uh, which we can actually do. And 10 minutes later, we had that result. Um, and that result was very high. Um, so those were pretty conclusive findings that this was indeed her parathyroid. And so with those, based on those uh, results, we took her to the operating room. And she had uh, what turned out to be an undescended right lower parathyroid tumor this time. So uh, a lower parathyroid gland that did not descend to its normal location. As I mentioned before, it was well above her thyroid. Um, and so we were able to successfully remove this. She did great. Her PTH value that we measured before her operation was 92. And 30 minutes later in the recovery room, it was 11. So she was cured again, despite the complexity of her case. Her symptoms resolved after surgery. She was very happy again, and hopefully we'll never see each other uh, again. Um, again, use this um, example of a pretty complicated case to show um, that if you are in, find yourself in a situation like that, there are options uh, for you. Um, and also to highlight the benefits of our center here, where we're able to get those results for, for a complicated situation within about 20 minutes. Um, most places would have taken weeks to get all of that sorted out. So um, thanks for listening to another interesting case with me. Um, if you're out there and you're in a situation like this where you've had an unsuccessful operation, um, please consider contacting us. I'd love to evaluate your case and, and uh, most likely we'll be able to help you. Have a good day. Till next time.